What's going on everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here and in this video we're going to do another example dealing with differentiability and we got to show that this function f of x equals x minus 1 times the absolute value of x minus 4 is not differentiable at an x value of 4. And like I've been doing in the previous examples, what I'm first going to do is take this function so x minus 1 times the absolute value of x minus 4. And I'm going to graph it just so we can visually see what's going on as well. So notice that this function has this absolute value of x minus 4. And as we know, we can take an absolute value function and always change it to a piecewise function. And it's really going to depend on if that expression, x minus 4, is going to be positive or negative. So if x minus 4 is positive, greater than 0, then we're just going to leave the expression as it is, x minus 4. Because remember, an absolute value is taking any negative values, changing them to a positive. So if this, x minus 4, is already positive, we just leave it as x minus 4. Now notice if x is equal to 4, it's just going to equal 0. And then if x minus 4 is negative, if it's less than 0, then we got to take that expression x minus 4 and multiply it by a negative, right, to make it positive. If that entire expression x minus 4 is less than 0, we multiply it by a negative 1 to make it positive. And then notice this, we can simplify. I'm actually going to keep these the same, so this is going to be x minus 4, but I'm going to simplify this, so I'm going to isolate for that x when x is greater than 4. Here we have when x is equal to 4, it's just equal to 0, and then I'm going to keep this as negative bracket x minus 4, and that's going to be when x is less than 4, if I isolate for the x there in that inequality. So this absolute value function is equal to this right here. So we could take that and use it to create a piecewise function for this over here. So notice the x minus 1. It's always going to be there. But this absolute value of x minus 4, it's going to equal positive x minus 4 when x is greater than 4. Notice that this whole function is going to be 0 when x is equal to 4, because if x is equal to 4, notice this would be 0, so 0 times that, this would end up being 3, 3 times 0 is just 0. And then if x is less than 4, then we're going to have x minus 1 times negative x minus 4, so that negative I'm going to put in front, so we'll have negative x minus 1, x minus 4, like that. So this is equal to this piecewise function right here. And now we can graph this. So if we graph this, uh, let's first graph this, x minus 1 times x minus 4. Notice that that's just a parabola with intercepts 1 and 4. So let's say this is 1. Let's say this is 4. And this is a parabola that's opening up. So notice that there's like a positive 1 in front. If we expand it, that first expression is going to be x squared, so that a value is positive, so it's opening up. So this is going to look something like that. Okay. And then at an x value of 4, we got 0, which... At an x value 4, this is going to be 0 as well because it's one of the intercepts, as well as this function. And then this function here, it's the exact same as this one with the same intercepts, 1 and 4, but it's just reflected over the x-axis because of this negative in front, meaning that it's going to have the same intercepts, but it's going to be opening down. So the way it's going to look is it's just going to be going the other way, like this. Okay, but notice that we have to restrict these graphs here because of these restrictions. So notice that it's equal to x minus 1 times x minus 4 when x is greater than 4. 
So it's going to be this function here, but when x is greater than 4. So what we would do is we would erase that function for all x values that are going to be less than 4. So erasing all of that there. And then notice that when x is uh, less than 4, it's going to be negative x minus 1 times x minus 4. It's going to be this function here. So all the x values greater than 4 we would erase. So we would erase all of these here. Okay, let's make this look a little nicer actually. Um, anyway, so that is one right there. Sorry, I'm just kind of, I guess, being a little perfectionist right now. All right, like that. And then at an x value of 4, the y value is 0 for both of these functions as well. So this is continuous. So notice at this x value of 4, this is actually a case of a cusp. Okay, because these are kind of curves here, right? Kind of looks like a corner, but it's really a cusp. So we have to show that this function, which is this graph, right? This function is the same as this, which is the same as this. We got to show that this function here is not differentiable at that x value of 4. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to show that that limit that definition of a derivative, limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h, we got to show that this limit doesn't exist. And if this limit doesn't exist, then we show that that function is indifferentiable at that x value of 4. So applying these parameters here, we're going to have the limit as h approaches 0 of f of, notice the a value is 4, so 4 plus h minus f of 4 all over h. Now, f of 4 we know is equal to 0, right? This point here is 4 and 0. So we know f of 4 is always going to equal 0, this part of the limit. However, this f of 4 plus h, it's going to depend on whether we're approaching that h value of 0 from the negative side or if we're approaching that h value 0 from the positive side. Because if we're approaching it from the negative side, then that h value is going to be a very small negative number. So we're going to have 4 minus a very small number, which is going to be close to 4, but it's going to be less than 4, which is going to be here on this function. right? So then that f of 4 plus h is going to be defined by this function right here. Right, so that would equal, if we plug in 4 plus h for the x values, we'll have negative. This first bracket, x minus 1, is going to be 4 plus h minus 1 times 4 plus h minus 4. Right, we plugged in this 4 plus h for these two x values in those two brackets. Right, and then we have the negative here. And again, we have to use this function because that's the function defined for x values less than 4. And if h is approaching 0 from the negative side, we're going to have 4 plus a very small negative number. Um, h is going to be a very small negative number. So this bracket's going to be less than 4, close to 4, but it's going to be less than 4. Hence, it's defined by that function. Now, if h is approaching 0 from the positive side, that means that h is going to be a small positive number, which is going to make 4 plus h, this bracket, greater than 4. Very close to 4, but it's going to be greater than 4. And if x is greater than 4, then it's defined by this function here, right? This, which is the parabola that is opening up. So we would plug in this 4 plus h for these x values in this function. So we would have 4 plus h minus 1, and then 4 plus h minus 4, like that. So two cases here, OK? So now what we got to do is this limit, because it depends on those two cases, we have to split 
this limit up here. So we'll have um, the limit as h approaches 0 from the negative side. And remember, f of 4 plus h is defined by that other function. So 4 plus h minus 1 times 4 plus h minus 4 minus f of 4, which is just 0. And that's going to be all over h. And then the other limit is going to be the limit as h approaches 0 from the positive side. And if it approaches 0 from the positive side, this f of 4 plus h is going to be that function. So we're going to have 4 plus h minus 1 times 4 plus h minus 4 minus f of 4, which is just 0. I'm not going to write it all over h. Didn't have to write that 0 either there. Okay, and now notice what's going to happen. What's nice is that 4 minus 1, that would be 3 plus h, right? This bracket simplifies to 3 plus h. And notice here, the 4s cancel out. And so we'd be left with just an h in that bracket. And what's nice is that h and that h now are going to cancel out. So now what we could do is we could just plug in 0 for this h value, and we would end up getting negative 3, right? Because there's that negative in front, 3 plus 0 is 3 times negative 1. We end up with negative 3. So this limit here is going to equal negative 3. While over here, we're going to have the limit as h approaches 0 from the positive side. Uh, 4 minus 1, that would be 3 plus h. The 4s cancel out, so we got h over h. Those h's cancel out as well. Same thing as here. Now we could plug in 0 for that h, and notice we'll end up with positive 3. So this limit ends up being positive 3. This limit here ends up being negative 3. And because we're approaching different values, these, uh, this function is approaching different values as we approach that 0 from the left and right side. It means this overall limit here does not exist for this a value of 4 and for that function, right? We showed that here. It's approaching different values, negative 3 and positive 3. And so because this limit does not exist, it means that this function here is not differentiable at, um, at that x value of 4. Now, I kind of want to talk about the, uh, the intuition of why this is happening here. So I'm going to erase this. Notice if I, if I just redraw this function, so we got the 1 and the 4, and that was just a parabola that was opening down like that, right? So for, if we just look at that function, Right, forget about this piecewise function. We're just looking at the function negative 1 times x minus 1 times x minus 4, uh, which is the function we were dealing with here. Notice that the slope of the tangent at that x value of 4, it's going to look like this, and it's going to have a slope of negative 3. Right? Versus the other function, which was opening up, 1 and 4, like this, that function at that x value of 4 is going to have a slope of positive 3. And basically what was happening was for both of these functions, we had that point 4 and 0. And so for this function, which was to the left of uh, 4, we're finding this, remember the difference quotient is finding the slope between two points. So we're finding the slope between this point 4 and 0 and a point that was really close to it but to the left of it. And so that's why that slope was approaching negative 3. Notice that that's a negative slope there. Versus for this difference quotient, it was the slope between two points, that 4 and 0, and then another point over here. Another point very close to 4 but to the right of 4. And so it was on that other function, that x minus 1 times x minus 4. And so the slope between those two points, as the points got closer and closer together, was positive, And it was positive 3, more specifically. 
right? So that's the reason why. And again, these are different values. So that overall limit as h approaches zero does not exist, which means this function is not differentiable at that x value of four.